Hi, I'm Chaz Kangas, host of First Impressions with Chaz Kangas, Sundays from 10 to midnight on Go 95.3. And today I have a special treat as I am joined live in the studio via speakerphone by Mystery Science Theater 3000 creator Joel Hodgson ahead of tonight's show at the State Theater. He and MST3K Live will be watching EGA and then a mystery film, and I'm here to get the latest lowdown and the lowest laydown on the latest season and tour of MST3K. Hey, Joel. Hey, how's it going? Spectacular. And yourself? I'm good, thanks. Cool. Thanks so much. I'm so glad we could work this out, and congratulations on the new tour and the new season, because I don't think we've spoken since uh, the last uh, since the launch of the new season earlier this year. Yeah, thanks so much. It, we're really happy. It seems like the backers and the fans, the old-time fans, really liked it, and so they felt like I think they felt like we stuck the landing okay. So we're we're doing good, yeah. Cool. And now, uh, what's it been like bringing this new uh, iteration on the road? Oh, um, it, it's amazing. It's like uh, these this cast is so strong. They're so good, and obviously they have all this experience together from doing stand up and. Imp- you know, people who do improv and stuff. So they have a ton of experience just performing. So um, them bringing that to the movie riffing has been amazing. So uh, we have, we are, I don't know, man, I think we have about two more weeks, I guess. This is like a six week tour. So maybe uh, I think we've done about, I don't know, 20 dates, maybe, maybe something like that. I'm not sure. I kind of lose track. We're in Kansas City today. Uh, but it's been amazing. I just, I couldn't have imagined uh, how much fun it is. And I was a little bit daunted because it's a bus tour. So we get on the bus after the show and sleep on the bus while we drive to the next city. And I'm, it's kind of like living on a submarine, you know. There you go. So, life on the road. Yeah, it's yeah. been really cool, though, I, I have to say, you know. So um, this actually, I know, isn't the first time Mr. Science Theater 3000's ever been presented live. Um, <clears throat> like two decades ago when you had the show at, I believe it was the Uptown Theater. Yeah, yep. the Uptown Theater, it's still there, too. Yep. I think it just, I heard it just got renovated, so that's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yep. And then, of course, um, uh, in the interim years in between, you had a few of the live cinematic Titanic shows, which just got released yeah. from Shout Factory. So, yeah, those just came out last month, yeah. Mm-hmm. So how different has this tour been versus uh, the previous instances of live movie riffing that you've done? Oh, well, the big thing, I think, is, you know, uh, the way we used to do it mostly with Cinematic Titanic is it was really like a table read of Mystery Science Theater. And the table read is basically when you sit at a, you know, basically you sit at a table and you read the script. And so that's really what Cinematic Titanic was, was us kind of watching the movie and reading off scripts. And this is a real production. So you see the Satellite of Love and you see the doorway sequence and you see the Mystery Science Theater and you get visits from King and Max on Moon 13. And the robots are there and we're doing sketches and stuff like that and music. So it's a real production. It's, it's really different than even when we did the show at the Uptown theater in in the nineties, that was really just us sitting uh, behind like a cardboard uh, theater seats. You know, we didn't have any sets or anything. So, um, so it's really elaborate now. I mean, it's kind of like, it's a real production, you know, it's a real show. And I think in the past, um, you know, we just kind of did our best to do... It was kind of a, a workaround because we didn't have the rights to do Mystery Science Theater, you know? Mm-hmm. Cool. So uh, now, too, with the new season and a further local connection, uh, Harmar Superstar does the new theme music. And I know, like, you originally did your best uh, Paul Westerberg for the show's original theme. So how did it come How did it come that I uh, hooked up with uh, with Harmar for it? Well, number one, before I forget, he's coming to the shows, and I think he's going to be leading the audience in the theme song. Oh, so wow. I, that's, that's what I heard. So Harmar's going to be on stage with us. And, um, and um, the, I don't know, it's really funny because I met Harmar. I was working on Jimmy Kimmel, 
and he was a he was a guest on Jimmy Kimmel Live, and that's when we first met. That was a long time ago. It was like twelve years ago, and he's just fascinating. He's a great soul singer, and he's funny and 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 great. And I just always thought, man, um, if I do MST again, I want that guy to sing the theme song, and so. Uh, I was interested in it, and I was talking to Jonah Ray about it, and I said, I'm thinking about Harmar, and he said, do it. He goes, he's a really good friend of mine. He sang at my wedding. So it turns out Jonah, who's our new host, is also good friends with him, so that kind of locked it. And uh, he was like the leader of the band for uh, the the TV series, as well as... um, Chuck Love, who uh, wrote the original theme song with me, and he, those guys produced a lot of the music together on the show. Wow. So yeah, uh, one big difference I've noticed with the new season, of course, is that you're doing it in 2017, where copyright law has changed quite a bit from getting the chance to do it, even back on to the early KTMA days, where you just, um, it's my understanding, just found things that looked interesting and... Um, uh, you know, and riffed on it. So now that you're preparing this for a medium like Netflix, did it change at all? Like, is there many differences in how you selected movies for uh, this particular season? And are, are there any movies that you wanted to riff for a while that you were happy to finally get your hands on for this latest batch? Uh, yeah, you know, I think um, just to reiterate the story, when I started Mystery Science Theater, I, I started with the premise like, oh, um, I want to use, I can do this concept because it's inexpensive because I'll use public domain movies because there's movies like Bride of the Monster and Plan 9 from Outer Space and Robot Monster that were public domain. So that was my thinking. But even when we did it at KTMA, we had to use movies that were licensed and they were just licensed through the uh, through KTMA that they would run as movies. And so after that, every show we had to find, even if a movie's public domain, nobody's caring for the print. And so you have to find a good print and and negotiate and make a deal for it. So we have to license all our movies. We always have, but, um, but because of the Kickstarter and because of Netflix, we were able to get better looking bad movies. And so the kind of the prerequisite was they had to be widescreen. They had to have good sound. And that was kind of motivated by me because these we spend a lot of time with these movies coming up with riffs. And if they're really ugly movies, they're just kind of hard. It's kind of hard on you. You know what I mean? It's kind of like working on a really busy street, you know, on the sidewalk. And if the, if the movie's not nice looking, it, it kind of can play on you over time. They're already bad movies, but if the print is bad and the sound is bad, that makes them that much harder. So to answer your question, it's like um, I was just trying to create an array of films that kind of felt familiar to people. This was kind of like I was trying to get movies that we're we're used to doing on Mystery Science Theater. But the idea was that could be the familiar part for the audience and then let the let the this new cast have at it and kind of show everybody what they can do, which they did. And also um, along uh, along the way, we we're. You don't get ratings on Netflix, but we're a hundred percent fresh on Rotten Tomatoes right now. So that they're this new cast is doing really good. Excellent. Uh, one interesting yeah. uh, part that's been pop culture and MSC three K intersecting even um, before the Kickstarter was about three years ago when you guys got a visual reference in the Nicki Minaj original Anaconda lyric video. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was amazing. Yeah. Uh-huh. So uh, that happens every now and then we were, we've been on the Simpsons like that and arrested development. And so, and mad magazine, you know, there's just like places that will occasionally drop in uh, the silhouette. So we always love it. It's really fun. And then on the new season, you know, of course, uh, Pat Oswalt is in every episode and you've had cameos from Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, so during the whole revival, Have there been any particular uh, celebrity fans and supporters of the show that have come out that have really surprised you? Yeah, you know what happened after the show came out is Lin-Manuel Miranda tweeted about it, and he, um, you know, and 
Felicia Day, who plays Kinga, like tweeted back to him and asked him if he wanted to be on the show next year, and he said he did. So that's like probably the most famous guy in recent memory that like liked the show. Uh, that was pretty amazing. Cool, cool. And uh, so one and thing I've also re- and, and just to reiterate, if your if your uh, listeners don't know who he is, he's the guy who wrote Hamilton. Oh, yep, yeah. And uh, we play tracks from uh, the Hamilton soundtrack on the station. So, yeah, yeah I so that, I'll be able to tracks th- yeah. throw into those. So and and one really cool thing too about the the new season is how much with the actual medium of the silhouettes you've been able to experiment with and were uh, a lot of those ideas things that you sort of like had for a while that you're excited to put in the new thing or how much of it just it came when you first just like got in with the new technology Yeah we I think it's just when you look at it and you look how big the people's screens are I mean it's like the show is about a third wider. There's about a third more real estate on the screen than there ever was. And so um, I kind of deliberately made the silhouettes a little smaller just because TVs are better now and you can see them better. And that left us with all this room. And so, yeah, we just slowly started to play with it, come up with ideas and just little moments where Jonah and the bots can do stuff and, uh, there was, I think mostly it was motivated by this scene in Avalanche where there's a, a, a topless woman and we had to kind of talk about, well, should we, this is a family show, so should we cut that out? And then we thought, oh, no, you know, we can get drones. We can have the robots fly drones and cover her breasts so it doesn't alarm any parents and stuff. So I think that's where it started. And then we just it just started to kind of uh, you know unspool after that. We got more and more ideas as we went, but um, it's it's becoming fun just because um, we can do more now, and uh, we just want to explore that and see what can happen. And we wanted to get Gypsy in the theater more. Like she was always relegated to just kind of dropping into the to sketches and not even dropping in, but just walking into sketches and. And we just wanted to get her in the theater every episode and land some really funny jokes. So we kind of came up with the idea that she comes in from above so she can just kind of have more freedom to come into the show more often. Excellent. Cool. Well, uh, once again, thank you so much. I'm glad we could work this out. And I'm very excited about uh, tomorrow night. Oh, thanks so much, man. Well, thank you. Thanks so much. I'm happy to happy to talk to you. Likewise. Uh, Have a great night and uh, have a great show tonight, too. Okay, see ya. Bye. Bye.